Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Ricardo de Silva. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are reminded on this feast where we remember all the saints who are with God, of the love that God has for us, that we are the children of God. For those times when we have failed to understand ourselves as the beloved of God, let us bring our sinfulness before God's love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel ascend from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed, out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no man could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne, and round the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, 
Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the rivers he made it firm. These These are the people people who seek your your face, face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. These These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Lessons from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, We are God's children now. It does not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when women and men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Funerals are for the living, not for the dead. A very dear priest friend once told me this. In my early 20s then, I found his pithy phrase crude and irreverent, even offensive. 
but I have come to appreciate his words. We need to remember our dead for our peace. The peace of those who have died is already eternal. The first letter of John in our second reading today leaves us this assurance that those who have died will see God's face. What we are to be in future, John says, has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like God because we shall see God as God really is. The solemnity of All Saints' Day, which we commemorate today, is usually set for November 1 in the Catholic Church calendar, this past Monday, although it is transferred for good reason to the following Sunday, some of its symbolism is lost when it is not celebrated immediately before All Souls Day, the feast we celebrate on November 2nd. In both, we remember our dead. On All Saints, we celebrate those who have died and we glory in their resurrection. They are the saints of our time and times past, who may not appear in the church's daily calendar of saints, but who nevertheless behold the face of God now. And on All Souls Day, we remember all who have died, whom we believe and firmly hope will behold the face of God someday. Today, we rejoice because we are the children of God, as the Apostle John assures his community. And we know that all who were created by God, baptized in Christ, and died in Christ, share in the resurrection Christ promised them forever. They live. But as John goes on to say, that promise should be the hope upon which we build our lives. Surely everyone who entertains this hope the promise of salvation in Christ and eternal life, must purify themselves. Our memories of those who we have loved, who have now died, serve to reunite us with that love that brought us so much joy and peace and for which we long. Those moments of memory and longing for what we had with our dearly departed bring us momentarily to that place of resurrection and they unite us with our beloved dead. But the memory of those who have died is often a place of reckoning for us. Think of the times and the rituals when we most honor our dead, and the crisis these often provoke in us, and the opportunities they bring us. We leave funerals, wakes, and memorial services not only mourning the person we loved or knew who died, but asking ourselves searing questions sometimes. How have I lived my life? What have I done? What am I doing? What will I do before I die? Put plainly, who am I? What is my legacy? The answers to these questions will help us to perhaps understand how we are to have that purity of Christ that John speaks of. So as not to descend into unhelpful images of what we conceive to be the purity of Jesus, let us consider St. Paul's teachings to the early Christian community. Paul would often address the people in Corinth, Rome, and Galatia as saints, even though he knew full well of their sinfulness. He recognized the great call each one had to holiness, and he should know, given his own sordid past and then his conversion on the road to Damascus. In much the same way as Paul wrote letters to his community, we can certainly draw profit from those letters for our own life and learn from all this great apostle writes. But today, I invite you to consider the gospel we've heard as Jesus' letter to us, a manifesto for our own road to sainthood. In the Beatitudes, 
Jesus gives us a way of living that is meant to support us in our journey of faith, our journey of holiness. Though we can read each line and take comfort that many of those who have died, whom we have known, fit the description of those considered blessed and therefore can be convinced that they rejoice in the kingdom of heaven, as Matthew tells us, we can also use these as an opportunity for deeper reflection on our own lives and whether we are presently leading our lives in ways that are pleasing to God and will fit us for heaven. Our gospel today is a challenge for us who live still. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, tells us who is blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger, those who thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the clean of heart, the peacemakers, those persecuted for righteousness. These are the ones the gospel tells us should rejoice and be glad, for their reward will be great in heaven. Allow me to offer a contemporary reading of some of these. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble who know that all is gift from God. Blessed are those who can see the brokenness of the world and mourn for it, because they are able to see the world and love it as God does. Blessed are those who can recognize injustices in the world and are moved by them, and who want to make the world a better place for their brothers and sisters. These Beatitudes speak to a set of values or attitudes that we are to encourage in our own lives if we are to become more like Christ, to become saints like the saints whom we celebrate today. Think of them not so much as an overwhelming goal to reach, but as an invitation to what we are called to live in our own priorities and choices. We are not only rejoicing and hoping in the resurrection and in the hope of salvation for all who have already died. We are placing firm hope in the salvation promised to us all. And so, indeed, our rituals and memories in honor of those who have died are not as much for our beloved who have departed the, this earth and behold the face of God. They are a gift from them to us who live and still need to learn to truly live for God. A wake-up call from the heavens. The number of those in heaven is untold, as is the number of those on earth who long to see God's face. But at the end of all of our days, when at last our hope for God is filled and we are all beholding God and those we have loved face to face, the incalculable losses of life this year the disappointments of all we have done this year and in years past, pandemics past, present, and future, will pale in comparison to what awaits us forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in God's love for each one of us, we turn to God with our prayers and petitions. For the Church, that all her members will, in their words and actions, proclaim the holiness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all elected and appointed leaders, that they may always strive to work for peace with justice among all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who face hardship in body, mind, or spirit, that they will be inspired by the lives of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our own parish community, that in our hunger and thirst for what is right, we may be peacemakers and show love and mercy to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially those who have no one to pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer on account of their faith, that they may receive blessings in this world and an eternal reward with all the saints of heaven in the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All loving God, we ask you to hear these our prayers, the prayers of your children, and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord. And grant, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of mortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, 
where the great array of our sisters and brothers already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us, in our frailty, both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper. He took the bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the gift of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of the faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all that sharing their grief and pain their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith alone you have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us take a moment to pray for the peace of those we love and those whom we have loved and who are no longer with us on earth. Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of all the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy really that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this Feast of All Saints, it's always a good time to remember that the month of November is a time to pray for all those who have died, for our dearly departed, who are with God, and for us who one day long to be, to behold God's face. Bow your heads and pray now for God's blessing. May God, the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.